everyone, and welcome to today's Gale Force Twins episode, where we are so excited because we are getting two Lumar shallow water anchors installed on our 18-foot Hughes. So we are going to cover a little bit of the install process, and then we are going to go fishing. We're going to do some fishing on this boat with our new anchors and put them to the test. My name's Amanda, Emily's behind the camera, and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. This episode is brought to you by Lumar. Okay, let's get this anchor installed. Of course, the very first step is to measure a transom to make sure the anchors are installed level and centered before scuffing the transom and gluing the surface plates onto the boat. We also added quick release brackets to our setup which allow for us to easily remove and put back on the shallow water anchors if needed. Then the anchors are attached to the quick release brackets and it's time to run the wire directly to our 12 volt battery, which charges when the motors run. So that means we don't have to worry about charging a separate battery for our anchors. What they end up doing here was running the wire next to our transducer wire for a simple and clean look. What we love about the Lumar shallow water anchors is that there are no pumps or hoses to mess with. Instead, we have a 100% electric, super lightweight, only 23 pounds anchor that can be installed in as little as one and a half hours. Everything you need comes in the box. Our favorite part about these shallow water anchors is how quiet they are, which is perfect for when you need to sneak up on the fish or you just want to enjoy a quiet day at the sandbar. For more information on the Lumar shallow water anchors, click the link in the description box. Now that we have our Lumar shallow water anchors installed, it is time to take them fishing. But before we put the boat in the water and utilize it to catch more fish, we are going to do a little land test. We're going to test them out. I'm we'll sure they work. I'm sure they work. I'm sure they work too. Touch of a button. We're going to pretend. Oh, Amanda, this looks like a good spot to catch some peacock bass. Why don't we put down our shallow water anchors? All right, give it a whirl. Looks great. Just I like mean, that. And then we're going to catch around. some fish. And then we're going to crush it. And then it's time to move, leave the spot. So what are we going to do? We're going to pull our Lumar shallow water anchors up. There they go. And we have ours set to operate at the same time. Yes. But you can have them operate one at a time. That is an option, but I am happy with it. I'm excited. I'm ready to go bend some rods. Let's go bend some rods. Today's bait of choice is a shiner and I hook them by going in the mouth out the top of the head. And one thing you'll notice is that the hook is not too far back. If it was any further back, I could puncture his brain, so we want to keep him lively. So we don't go too far back, but we go in the mouth, out the top of the head. That is one option. There's a couple other ways that we like to hook them, but they're kind of, these are big, these are big shiners. So we'll give them a try, toss them out, and see if there's any peacock bass here. That would be the ideal species. And because we're fishing with live bait, I'm gonna leave the bale open I'm not gonna sit here and do this. You can, I don't recommend it. You are more likely to not land a fish by doing that. So what I'm gonna do, cast him towards the wall. Okay, there he goes, he went towards And that keep the bale open. And I will keep my finger on the line, just like this. So my bait can swim around freely. And when a fish does take him, this line can go freely. And I want that to happen. And I'll give it, we say three to five seconds to give the fish a chance to basically eat the bait and swallow the hook. And then we'll close the bale and reel on them. Oop, I got a bite. Three, four, five, six, seven. It was a big shiner, so I'm gonna wait. Reel. Oh, we're on! Oh, we lost him, we lost him. Hold on. Let's try that again. Just keeping my finger on the line like this, waiting to feel that bite. I'm definitely gonna let it run for a little while because they're really big shiners today. I'm hoping he's not, oh no. What's going on, Amanda? I don't know, I, I lost him again. Lost him again? Lost him again. We ended up switching spots because our Shiners. This one's actually a normal size, but our shiners are like 
this big. They are massively insane. And for whatever reason, we couldn't hook into whatever was biting us at the previous spot. And we never even saw what was biting us. So it could have been smaller fish or something that just couldn't bite that shiner. We don't really know what it was, but basically I went to three different tackle shops this morning to find shiners. And the only shiners I could find are the biggest shiners I've ever seen. Almost I've ever seen. So they're massive shiners. So we switched spots, hopefully somewhere to where maybe the fish are a little bit bigger and can actually eat these guys. We are on. We've got a fish on. Let's see what it is. It is not even a peacock bass. Can you believe that, Amanda? What is that it? That was the oh, whole reason why we came here. And it's a small guy, but that's okay. The skunk is off the boat with a large mouth bass. Now, he's not the targeted species, but I gotta be honest, there's something about catching a native fish like this. I mean, I, I, don't, I know they're green, I know they're brown, but personally, <laughs> I actually love their colors. I think that but it's, this. I mean, this guy ate a bait almost as big as him. Yeah, the shiner was about this big. The shiners today. But I mean, largemouth bass guys, you gotta, they got big mouths. There's a reason he ate a shiner <laughs> the size he did. All right, let's get him released. Let's send this guy home. I'll place him in the water and hold on to him until he kicks away. There he goes on his own. Is it? Peacock. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, it's a peacock bass and it is fighting. Oh my gosh, in the lily pads. All right, hold on. Got to get him in the boat nice and carefully. One, two. We're on the deck, Emily. We're on the deck. We have our first peacock bass. Check out the color on these guys. These guys are native to South America, I believe, and they were brought over to help control the Mayan cichlid population, which is an invasive species. People ask all the time, is this also an invasive species or is it? What's the other word, Emily? It's not native. A non-native. So it's not native, native but it's not necessarily invasive. Beg to differ, or I'm not begging to differ, but some people beg to differ. It's basically a controversy in here in South Florida, in our waterways. But these fish are so beautiful. They're fun to fight, fun to catch. They get these stripes. And this looks like a female right here. Just like Mahi Mahi, the males will build like a little forehead on them. The females are nice and smooth like a cow Mahi, and the males have a forehead. So this here, it looks like a female peacock bass. All right, Amanda, let's get him back in the water. Ready for the release. We're gonna put him over the side, put his head under the water, oh, oh, and oh. give him a chance. There he goes. Went away on his own. Oh, Amanda. This one's a fighter. Oh no. This is a bigger one. Get the landing net, Amanda. I'm only using 10 pound liter, so I definitely, oh, it's not a peacock. It's it? a gar. Oh, no, it's a snakehead. Oh, snake snakehead, snakehead, snakehead. Snake snake right. In the net, in the net. In the net. In the net. That's a big snakehead. The bite turned on. We just landed this beautiful yet invasive bullseye snakehead. Now check out that bullseye on the tail. That's how you know it's a bullseye snakehead. And yes, they are invasive to our Florida waters. So no, we are not going to be releasing them. Now there's a difference from not native and invasive. If it's not native, it's not from here. If it's an invasive species, it's a problem. So we're not going to release this guy. We're just going to put him on the ice. We do have a catch clean cook snakehead video, which goes into the details on the medicinal properties of these, these fish. They're actually from Asia and they're known to have medicinal properties. We have actually filleted them, cooked them and ate them before and not gonna lie, they're actually pretty good. So this invasive snakehead, we are not gonna be releasing, but what a nice catch. And you can understand why they get the name snakehead. Check out the shape of these fish, look at the head. I mean, they look like a combination between a snake and a finch, fish. <laughs> a snake and a fish, hence the name, snakehead. We hope you guys enjoyed not only coming fishing with us, but also coming with us to get those Lumar shallow water anchors installed. Now for more information, there will be a link in the description box on those Lumar shallow water anchors. We hope you guys get out there, have fun, and stay safe. Can you also come a little closer? Hello, say hi. Hi, my name's Amanda.
Hi, my name's Emily. Say again? Hi, my name's Amanda. Okay, we're good. Oh shit, I wasn't even recording that. Oh, you wanna say something? Yeah. Okay. Are we on? Oh, no, he's... Let him eat I... longer. I don't really want to. And your, your drag's too heavy. Yeah, I know. Lively. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Moment <laughs> of truth. Real? Oh, it's a duck. Oh. It was a duck. Never mind. There was a duck in my braid. All right, um, how did I start our episode? Hey, everyone, and welcome to today's Guys Take Us 